What is up you guys and thank you so much for joining me. Today is teardown day on the LQ series engine. And if you guys missed the last video, I'll go ahead and do a quick walk around for you. She's, uh, she's nice and crusty, but we're gonna go ahead and fix that. It is out of a 2006 Cadillac Escalade. They said it has just under 300,000 miles, so we're gonna call 300,000 miles. I am not sure if it is an LQ9 or an LQ4 yet. Like I said in the last video, we gotta pull the heads, take a look at the pistons, then we'll be able to tell. I did forget to mention in the last video that it did come with the Vortex Max lawnmower cover. Now, the only problem is, and it's not really that big of a problem because I wasn't planning on actually using it on the engine, I just wanted the whole set. It only came with two of the pieces. It was supposed to have the third piece as well. Which is no biggie. I'm just gonna go ahead and repaint the Vortec and the Max part and then probably just hang it up on the wall for a wall art anyway. But for now that it is enough talking, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this chewed up wiring harness off, off camera, and then we can go ahead and start tearing into her. Bam, wiring harness has been removed. Plug wires have been removed. Per usual, the plug wires were fused to the actual spark plugs, so that was fun getting those off. And also, I did wanna mention, I think it's funny. I mean, I'm glad that they put the cap on there to keep moisture out, but you look in there and there is just full of dirt and grime anyway. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the intake manifold, which is not gonna be that difficult because we already pulled it to get the lift plate on when we pulled the engine out of the back of the truck. So we'll go ahead and just, oh hey, it's off. Okay, next I wanna go ahead and get the exhaust manifolds off. I already lubed up the ones that weren't broken. Per usual, there's always at least a couple broken bolts in there. So I've got one right there and then one on the back side over here. And then also there's another one on the other side. Well, hopefully the ones that I had soaking will come out just fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try and break these free by hand and then we'll go ahead and use the power tool. I just don't wanna risk breaking the head off and then screwing myself. Yay! So they said we need to go ahead and take the dipstick off first. Give it a little bit of a jiggle. And there we go. Bam! Now we're gonna be pulling the coil pack harness and then we can go ahead and pop the valve cover off. The valve cover gasket has definitely been leaking. It's pretty hard. I'm extremely impressed with how clean this is in here actually. Whoever had this actually took care of it. This looks really good for 300,000 miles on it. Let's go ahead and get the other one off. This side is extremely clean as well. Yeah, whoever had this actually gave a shit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the water pump and the coolant crossover. Already broke these free by hand. Oh, <coughs> that smells like actual death. Oh my God. That smell was so rough that I lost half my hair. Now that the shop's aired out a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and remove the heads. Okay, it already smells like dead fish. Bam! Oh shit, it's an LQ9. She's got flat tops. Not that that matters, because in the previous video I talked about how we're doing all forged internals and all that, but we can use these pistons at a later date on something else, hopefully. All right, let's get the other head off.
Hey, it's still an Oki9 on this side too. There's definitely a good amount of carbon buildup going in here. It's flaking everywhere. Also, you can tell that there's definitely a good amount of uh, miles on this because the cylinder walls are very shiny and reflective, almost like a mirror in there. Uh, so far, I haven't noticed a whole lot of pitting or anything, just a little bit going on right here, nothing too serious. And I actually ended up taking a better look at what I thought was pitting. It looks like it's just aggressive carbon buildup. So once we get the pistons knocked out, we can take a better look at the cylinder walls. All I'm really worried about is cracking and like aggressive pitting but we can get that board out if need be but uh, it's looking like it's going to be pretty good so we'll just go ahead and continue the tear down also i figured i would give you guys a quick look at the heads everything looks great of course there's carbon buildup and all that to be expected with the way that those uh, cylinders look like and it's got 300,000 miles on it none of the valves look burnt or anything like that and i was actually really impressed with uh the push rods all of them look like they're in great shape none of them are bent like uh the ones out of my 5.3 so yeah it's moving along pretty good all of this like usually you want to make sure that the rods come or the push rods and the rocker arms stay together with uh, where they came out of but i'm going to be using literally none of this for the new engine um i'm sure we'll use these heads on a different build in the future for like a turbo build maybe on that 5.3 or the one that comes out of the truck now we can go ahead and move on to pulling the lifters on both sides. We can take a look at those. First, we got to get the trays out of the way. I'm not gonna lie, for having 300,000 miles on this engine, these lifters are actually in really good condition. Off camera, I checked them, they all roll nice and freely. There's a little like groove, I guess you could say, right there on that lifter, but that could have just been dirt that got caught in between the lifter and the cam. As you guys can see, they still held oil nicely. A lot better condition than the one that came out of my 5.3. That thing made a lot of noise when she cut loose. Well, that sucks. She broke all the shit. So apparently you only get three underdrive pulley removals with the Harbor Freight remover. I was going for a fourth one and it didn't quite work out. So we're gonna have to wait till they open up tomorrow and I can get a new one. Well, I'm glad that I checked to see if all the oil was drained. It says all the oil was drained, all the fluids and everything, but uh, clearly it wasn't. Glad I checked that before I flipped the engine over to remove the oil pan. Yay! Now the oil pan's off. It did have a decent amount of oil still left in it, so now we can flip it. Awesome, still got coolant in it. Ah, oh, it's got a large amount of coolant still in it. It is now the next day. I went ahead and let this thing just bleed out overnight. Got it all cleaned up, good to go there. And then I ended up actually renting a uh, underdive pulley remover from AutoZone. I didn't want to deal with another Harbor Freight one blowing up on me. I'm honestly surprised that we got three pulley removals with that thing. I figured that was a good run. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and order one that's actually meant for an LS. Cause this one's actually meant for a Chrysler, but we're gonna go ahead and make it work. Also AutoZone, if you're watching, that shit was bent already. So real quick, if you never pulled a pulley, pulled a, pulled a pulley, yeah. Take this rod, stick it through the snout right there. And you're gonna take these jaws, there's gonna be three of them. There's three little notches on the back side of the pulley. I'll show you guys once we get it off. Make sure those are, make sure and drop the bolt there. We're gonna get those snugged up right there. Take the bolt, twist it in. Okay, now that she's nice and snug, and for those of you that are gonna call me out for calling it a bolt, it is actually called a pressure screw. Take your socket, and you're basically just gonna keep tightening it down. There we go. We're gonna get you guys a quick shot right here. That's where the jaw's gonna go over. There's notches on the back of the pulley right there. As you guys can see, it's removing the pulley from the snout of the crank. Just keep twisting it off. Bam. So that worked out great. That was nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and order one of these right when I get home. I will put a link in the description below from the one that I order, which is gonna be this exact same one, but for LS engines, because this is for a Chrysler, but it worked out perfectly, so I don't really know what the difference is. 
We're gonna be needing it when we do the cam swap in the vet, and we've got a bunch more engines that we're gonna be building here in the future. Now we're gonna move on to removing the front cover. In my situation, I don't really have to worry about it because everything's being torn out and new stuff's going in. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this just for shits and giggles up to top dead center, get number one cylinder. Then we can go ahead and remove the oil pump. Oh, I'm dumb. So we're gonna have to actually remove the pickup tube right there. Go ahead and loosen the pickup tube bolt. There we go. And the oil pump is off. And we got the timing chain set. Oh, that is sloppy. She got a little bit of slop. Real quick, like I said earlier, this doesn't really matter for me right now, but if you're doing a cam swap or something, you want these two dimples right here lined up before you take the timing set off. And then number one cylinder, top dead center. And there's the cam. So to remove the cam, I'm just gonna go ahead and use two of the water pump bolts. They go right in. Actually, we're gonna use three of the water pump bolts. Now, I don't have to worry about the bearings a whole lot right now because they're getting all punched out and all new bearings, but I'll still try and be as careful as possible. Okay, just kidding. Damn. I'm intrigued to see what those bearings look like, especially after I beat the shit out of them. There we go. So I'm gonna get you guys a look at the cam we just pulled out of the six liter. And there's many things in this world that are supposed to have grooves, but your cam's not one of them. These are, these are pretty healthy grooves right here. There's a look at that. And then we've got the stock cam that came out of the 5.3 that we built a while back. So this is 80,000 miles versus 300,000 miles. Real quick, off camera I went ahead and threw the lift plate back on and then threw these legs on, which first time using these, I am very happy with them. Um, I will have links in the description for both of these. Legs make it nice and handy. Uh, the reason I took it down is because I forgot to remove the rear cover. So I need to pull the rear cover before we get too far ahead of ourselves and pull the pistons and aren't able to remove the crank. So I'm gonna get this removed. We can get it put back on the engine stand and then we can pull the rest of the internals. All eight rods and pistons have been removed. Surprisingly, the bearings are actually in really good condition for how many miles are on it. They've got the standard wear and tear. I went ahead and left them open so you guys could get a look at them. Yeah, standard wear and tear, but nothing too terrible. I'm actually very surprised. As far as the crank goes, it looks like it's in great condition as well. I went ahead and just left it in the block. I was gonna pull it, but there's no sense in pulling it out just to put it in to take it to the machine shop. So it's gonna go ahead and stay there. It's good to go. Then just one last look at all the parts that came off of this thing. I am super pumped to finally have this thing all torn apart. I'm sorry if the video was kind of boring, but I just wanted to go ahead and film it, show you guys the process of how I go about it. Um, now I need to go ahead and make an appointment with the machine shop, figure out when I can get this thing taken down there, and then I can finally get the parts ordered that we talked about in the previous video. And then we can get this thing put back together and get it in the truck. I cannot wait to hear this thing fire off. That's the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great night. When your camera's being a giant pile of shit, you gotta do a mic check. Mic check.